Hey, what's up? It's Nathan Williams with Crazy Marketing. Now this video right here is a compilation of several videos that help make up the course that you're taking right now. Now to help you navigate through everything, I've provided timestamps down below in the description. So I recommend going, check out those timestamps, watching what's relevant to you. Let's get into it. In this section of the course, we will be discussing funnel structure. And the first thing we're gonna do is discuss a blog article I wrote on what funnel to build. So that way you are focusing on building the right stuff from the get go. Then we'll talk about the different page types within ClickFunnels and why it's important that you choose the correct page type. Then we'll get into some of ClickFunnels pre-built funnels and how to get those going. We'll also talk about the funnel level settings versus the page level settings. So what the differences are and where to go to change them. Then we'll do a complete recap of the settings because it is an important topic. Then we'll cover page paths. So that way you'll have some sort of organization to your pages. And then we'll talk about the automations available within ClickFunnels. So you can send emails and text messages. And we'll cover when you might wanna use ClickFunnels automation platform versus when you'll wanna outsource to a third party marketing automation tool like ActiveCampaign. And then we're gonna cover adding products to your funnel so that way you can sell some stuff. Now this section of the course is going to be a fire hose. I'm gonna throw a ton of information at you and it's not super actionable right now. And more than likely it's gonna feel overwhelming and it might frustrate you a little bit. And I'm sorry to do that to you, but I need to provide all this background information before moving onward to building the funnels. So my recommendation is to watch these videos at one and a half or two X speed. And you can do that with a browser extension like Video Speed Controller, and I'll link to it down below. But if it's your first time through, just watch all these videos real quick. You don't necessarily have to go out and do anything with the information provided in them. Just consume it, try and get a basic understanding of what I'm talking about, and then move on to the next section of the course. And eventually, once you start building the funnels, you'll see where the videos kind of fit in place. And so then you can go ahead and revisit the information in those videos, and it'll all make a little bit more sense. So that's just a little warning. There's gonna be a lot of information coming at you real fast, and you're not gonna be able to do too much with it until you're building funnels but you need this background information in order to piece everything together later on. So just bear with me, get through this section, so that way we can get to building some funnels. In this video, we're gonna discuss the various page types that you're gonna to use to build your funnels inside of ClickFunnels. So let's say that you have a funnel you wanna build, and right here I have a front-end funnel mapped out. Uh, it's to sell a product or a service with one-time offers, down sells, and there's also a squeeze page and welcome page and order confirmation page. So there's several different page types we're gonna be using to build this funnel inside of ClickFunnels. Now this is an important concept and video to watch because you have to select the correct page type. If you don't select the correct page type, um, you're not gonna be able to take payments or do a one-time offer or do an order confirmation or do an opt-in. Like you have to have the right page type for the objective of that page. If you're trying to accept money, you do order form or OTO. If you're trying to collect lead information, you do opt-in. Um, so it's important that you select the correct page type. So make sure you understand this concept. And we're gonna come over to Click Funnels and construct a funnel real quick with the appropriate page type so you can see what I mean. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the training. Real quick, I have a special offer that I want to present to you where you can get a digital copy of my book as well as an audio copy. Plus, I'm giving away 20 pre-written emails that make your email writing a piece of cake. And finally, I have a seven-figure funnel. It's the first funnel that I built that generated over seven figures for a small business, and it includes training on how to actually set up the funnel. If you're interested in that, plus several other bonuses, link in the description down below, or there'll be a link in the little box up above here. So if you're interested, check it out. Back to the training. All right, so we'll come over to click funnels and I'm just gonna go to funnels and we're gonna build a new funnel. What I wanna go ahead and do is sell your product. Just choose this one real quick and I'll choose sales funnel and I'll just say demo funnel. And we could go ahead and tag our funnels as well to kind of group them and keep them organized. So I'll just say that this is demo. So these are my demo funnels, build funnel, even though this entire account is a demo account. So, you know, it is what it is. So this is our funnel builder area, and I got a new badge, but whatever, don't care. I guess they're trying to gamify it, make it fun and addictive. All right, anyway, so it pre-built a funnel for me, kind of. So it lays out some of the pages I will need in the funnel, like squeeze page, sales page, order form, order confirmation, thank you page, etc. So it kind of tells you 
what page types you probably want to select. Now it could be wrong, but since it has this little exclamation point here, hopefully you can see that. Basically, it's just like giving you the the idea of what page or recommendation of the page type you should have, but it's it has not set one in stone yet. So you could change it from squeeze page to webinar page if you wanted to. So anyway, it gave us a few pages automatically, but we can change them, no big deal. And then across the top here, we see our types of pages. So we have opt-in, email opt-in, thank you. We have sales pages, sales page, product launch, order form, one click upsell, one click downsell, order confirmation, webinar pages, for, and this is evergreen webinars. We have registration, thank you, broadcast room, and then we have membership pages, membership access, membership area, and then we have affiliate pages, so if you have backpack and you're setting up an affiliate area you can go ahead and use these pages they have the click pop function and then miscellaneous pages never done anything with miscellaneous painted pages so not sure what that is but anyway let's go ahead and take a look at our funnel so our for our first page in our funnel is an opt-in or squeeze page right so we'll come here and i think it's already on opt-in so they have a bunch of pre-built templates already so we could go through here and be like, oh, this one looks pretty and select one if we want it. I'm just gonna go with this very first one. Um, of course, you could go ahead and redesign the pages how you want them or start from scratch or whatever. And I have a whole nother module on the page builder. So we'll discuss actually constructing the pages later on. Right now we're just doing the, the funnel structure, making sure our page types are right. So we selected squeeze page or opt-in page for this first page in our funnel. And that's because we wanna select accept email addresses and the only way we and other contact information not just email addresses but we could take in you know name phone number uh, custom fields etc so we could take in you know it's a lead generation page type and we need this type of page in order to collect that contact information so we have that page type selected the next one in our funnel is a welcome and pre-sale page and this is just a standalone page basically just an information page there's no no objective on it, they're not opting in, they're not buying anything or anything like that. So for general pages that just has content on them, you can select any page type you want um, because it doesn't really matter. You don't have to accept money on an order form page or you don't have to uh, have people opt in on a squeeze page. Like you could just use a page and just put content on it. So in this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and select an order form page because maybe someday I'm gonna change my mind and I do wanna accept money on this page. So I want it in the right page type uh, for later on if I change my mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and come down here and now it's recommending sales page to us already, but that's just because it pre-built the funnel. Remember I said that hopefully. And so I'm actually gonna to go to sales and then go to order form and I'm gonna go ahead and select just random order form page. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and rename this page real quick, just so that way I can keep it straight. Welcome and pre-sell and update funnel step. And we're gonna go through all these publishing options and settings and all this stuff in follow on video. So don't worry about that right now. I just wanted to rename the page so it makes follows in line with the funnel we're building here. All right, now we have sales page. And this is actually gonna be an order form page because we're gonna accept money on here. So let's come back over and it's already recommending an order form page type, so cool. And so sales, order form, make sure we are on the right one. I'll select this other template just so they look different, you know what I'm saying. So this is our order form page. Now in my little funnel diagram, I call it a sales page, sales page. All right, so then the next page of our funnel is a one-time offer. So they buy something on our order form or sales page, and then they're brought to a one-time offer or one-click upsell, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this pre-established page. And again, they set it as order confirmation, but we can change that. So I'm gonna go sales, one-click offer, upsell, and I'll go ahead and select this template here. And let me go ahead and name it, rename it real quick. OTO1, update funnel step. All right, and then we have OTO2. I'm gonna go ahead and add that real quick. So let me edit this page. And sales, OTO, select this template. And 
I'm going to rename this page OTO2. And then we have an order confirmation page. So let me add that one next. So we'll do add new step. And we will do order confirmation. Create funnel step. And then I want to go to sales and order confirmation. And I'll just select this template here. So we have our order confirmation page now. And now we need to go ahead and add our downsell page. So if somebody doesn't buy OTO1, we want to show them a downsell offer uh, before they go on to OTO number two. So we want to go ahead and add that real quick. So we'll do downsell, create funnel step. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the downsell, one click downsell option here. And I'll select this template because that looks cool. And now I want to position my downsell page right behind the OTO page that the downsell is for. So ClickFunnels, how it works is it starts at the top. So it goes from this page down to this page, over to this page, and then to this page. And then uh, it's smart enough to know on an OTO page that the person buys the OTO, it'll automatically jump over the downsell page and go on to the next page in your funnel. The next page in my funnel happens to be OTO2, but if, you had, if it went straight to order confirmation, then they'd go straight to order confirmation. Um, whereas if they say no to the one-click upsell, then ClickFunnels is smart enough to show the downsell. And then after the downsell, after they buy it or don't buy it, they go on to OTO2 automatically and then to the order confirmation page. And so just like that, in like eight and a half minutes, we've set up the structure of our funnel with our page types. So now we could go in here and edit the pages, customize them. We gotta add products. We gotta do some other things to it. I mean, the funnel is obviously not done yet, but we set up the foundation, the structure of our funnel, and that's it for this video. In this video, we're gonna talk about pre-built or shared funnels. So ClickFunnels is pretty cool because it lets people share funnels with each other. So if somebody builds a funnel, they could share it with you, or you could build a funnel and share it with somebody else. You could sell that funnel, etc. So it makes it really easy to import, you know, kind of proven funnels or pre-built funnels to make your life easier. Now, as a member of this course, you have access to all of my pre-built funnels. So here's a quick uh, overview, demonstration of them, and I'll have a link to these funnels uh, in the course notes. So you could go ahead and you know preview the funnel if you want to preview it and check it out, see if it's what you want. And then you'll also have a link to this document here that has all the shared funnels that I have, and you could go ahead and import them in your account real easily. I'll show you how to do it in this video. So I just wanted to point that out. You have access to all these funnels that I've done. So you got that going for you. Um, but also ClickFunnels has their own pre-built funnels. Now in the last video, we, we built our own funnel and we used pre-built pages, but you can actually import an entire funnel if you want to as well. So to do it, we'll come up to ClickFunnels and Build Funnel. And we're gonna go with the cookbook builder process. So let's go ahead and do Start Cookbook. And real quick, there's this get a free copy of the cookbook. Let me open that real quick and show you what this is. So basically it's a PDF or you could buy the actual physical copy. I think it's $20 for them to ship it to you. It's a pretty cool looking thing, but basically what it does is it gives you a bunch of the funnel diagrams and kind of the building blocks for constructing funnels, like the types of pages you need um, and the type of content that goes on those pages and then how to construct the funnel. So it's a pretty good little guide and it's free. The PDF version is free. So if you're new to funnels, I definitely recommend giving it a look just to you know wrap your head around funnels and kind of how ClickFunnels approaches building funnels with ClickFunnels. It's a good little, good little guide. All right, anyway, let's say you, you understand funnels and the concept of them. Then we go to, into our cookbook here, and there's a bunch of different options to choose from. There's two-step, tripwire funnel, lead magnet funnel, daily deal funnel, membership funnel, reverse squeeze page funnel, survey funnel, and so on. So a lot of different categories in here. So it's almost overwhelming, I think. But anyway, let's say that you know about what you want to do. Let's see. There's got to be like a regular sales funnel in here somewhere. Let's see. Survey funnel, two-step tripwire funnel. I think that sounds good. I'm gonna go ahead and do select funnel here. And it brings us to another page that breaks down what a two-step tripwire wire funnel is. And so it's for buyers, so this is, this is for selling stuff. 
It's four pages, takes about an hour to set up. Now, it's gonna take you longer to set up than that because you probably gotta write your content, you probably gotta do a bunch of different things, integrations, connections, etc. but yeah, um, in an ideal, ideal world, it takes you an hour to set up. Uh, it gives you a little video here, it walks you through basically the cookbook that I was just talking about, walks you through that and how it applies to this particular funnel. And then we got some directions, gives us the pages that are part of the funnel. And we have two-step order page, OTO page, downsell page, offer wall. And then we have the funnels that we could go ahead and choose from. So they have a bunch of free ones in here, as you can see, free, 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 free. And then they also have paid ones down here. So you could go and check them out. Um, of course, you know, if you need one of these paid ones, you can get it or you can start with a free one. And you can also filter here if you wanted to, you know, quickly see the free versus paid. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select this one here, the JSON theme. And we get a little preview of the JSON theme. So this is what it looks like. Ooh, ooh, ah. So yeah, it looks nice and pretty and all that stuff. So to add it to my account, I'm just gonna do get funnel. And it says, we're working on delivering your funnel to your ClickFunnels account, sit tight. So we sit here for a minute and wait for it to load. And boom, just like that, we have the funnel in our account. So we got our order form, OTO page, a downsell page, and then a order confirmation page or offer wall. So we could, you know, I'll just preview it real quick. And see, there, there's the funnel. So we could go in, edit it, and, you know, make it fit our particular needs. Pretty cool stuff right there. Now, if you want one of my funnels, uh, you can just go to this document here, and you can just follow one of these links and since you're already lo logged into your ClickFunnels account, it'll pop up this message. If you're not logged into your ClickFunnels account, it'll ask you to log in or ask you to register. So anyway, uh, once you're in, you can just be like, okay, yeah, I want this funnel, add funnel. And it goes ahead and processes it. And it says complete view funnel. So let's view it. And boom, just like that, we have a fully built funnel in our ClickFunnels account, similar to how I imported the funnel from the cookbook. So I just wanted to point this out to you real quick, how you can import shared or pre-built funnels into your account, whether you go through the funnel cookbook or one of the funnels that I share with you with this course. Uh, just make your life easier to you know bring in a fully built funnel instead of building something from scratch. And that is it for this video. In this video and the following videos, we're gonna be discussing the funnel settings as well as the funnel structure and basically how ClickFunnels breaks things down. So in this particular video, we're gonna be discussing the funnel level settings. But before we get into that, I wanna tell you about the different levels inside of ClickFunnels. So the funnel level settings are settings that impact your entire sales funnel. So we're gonna cover that in this video. So whatever you adjust at your funnel level settings uh, impacts everything else in your funnel, all your pages and things of that nature. And then we have different stage steps, sorry, steps or pages in your funnel, like the opt-in page, the welcome page, sales page, OTO1, OTO2, order confirmation, downsell page. So those are pages or steps in your funnel. And each page and step has its own settings, which we'll discuss in the next video. And then within each page or step, we have different variations. So we could have a split test going on, variation A, variation B, variation A, variation A, B, A, et cetera. And so each variation also has its own settings and we're gonna discuss that in the next video too. But this one we're doing funnel level settings, so let's go to click funnels. So here we are in the funnel and these are the funnel level settings that I wanna to talk to you about in the blue bar here. So we'll just go right across the top here. So of course this is the name of our funnel and then if we click right here, we get the link to our funnel. So we come over and we plug it in and boom, there we go, there is our funnel right there, pretty cool stuff. You could also go ahead and click a button and go right to it. And you could also click this question mark here and it'll pop up the link and you can go ahead and copy and view it. So like three different ways for you to view the link to your funnel. So pretty, pretty overwhelming. All right, then we have the steps setting. So this is where you go in here and you edit your various steps. So we have the step settings here. So overview, automation, publishing, and so on. Again, we're gonna cover this in the next video, uh, but this is a step, so if you go to the next one, You'll see that there's a step and then there's different step options as well. So anyway, that's this tab. Then we have the stats tab. So here we can view the, the stats for our funnel. Again, these are funnel level settings. So we can view the stats for the entire funnel in one place. Now I don't have anything going on right now, but when you have traffic and purchases and opt-ins and all that stuff, it populates with 
all the relevant information. So pretty cool stuff, pretty handy, pretty accurate as well. So, you know, it gives you a good snapshot of what's going on in your account. Um, they, they have had issues with recurring subscriptions, so that those weren't accurate. But anyway, gives you a good you know snapshot of what's going on and hopefully you can track that other information um, in another way. All right, so you could also filter. So if you send traffic with the UTM parameters, which are basically Google parameters, uh, you could go ahead and filter your traffic, you know, so you can identify the source, like if it's coming from Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or something like that, or email, and you could, you know, really hone in on your traffic sources and what's generating the income and everything. So highly recommend utilizing UTM parameters if you understand that concept. I have another training out there in the world on UTM parameters, but you can also Google it and learn about them as well. There's you know, a lot, of, a lot of information on it, very popular topic. You could also filter based on affiliate sub IDs. You could also change the dates. You could change the category and you could also filter for costs and get a breakdown of that. Of course, apply filter and boom, just like that, you filtered and could get a snapshot of whatever you filtered for. Moving on to the next tab here, we have contacts. So here we can see our contacts that have gone through our funnel and you can filter this by, you know, different parameters here. The, the right there and you can also filter it by steps so if you want to do all funnel steps so all the contacts that ever touched your funnel you could do that or you could see all the contacts that went to OTO number one or that made it to OTO number two or and so on so you can filter all sorts of ways and then you could go ahead and download your contacts as well if you want to export that list or something of that effect you could go ahead and do that now moving on to the next tab which is sales so here you can track the sales going through your funnel again same settings as the the contacts tab so we can filter on different time frames filter on different steps if we want to uh, you could also download the the customer information as well so you could download all that stuff um, of course, if you have customers, I don't have any, so we're blank. But anyway, going on to settings, and we're going to adjust a few things in here because this is where you make a lot of your, your changes. So first thing, we could go ahead and reset the stats. So of course, when you're testing your funnel, you've probably gone through it a few times, and your numbers look amazing because you've had three unique visitors, and all three of them have spent the maximum amount of money, and so it's going to throw off your stats. So I recommend resetting your stats before going live with your, your funnel. You can also share your funnel, so with this button here, or you could also copy and paste your share funnel link down here. Then you could also clone the funnel, so if you have a funnel that you like and you wanna duplicate it, you can clone it by clicking that button there. If you wanna rename your funnel, you can do it here. Uh, if you wanna change your group tag, here's where you do that. Domain, so this is where you go ahead and set the domain for your funnel, as you notice. Uh, my funnel is still on the ClickFunnels subdomain, and if I want to move it to my actual domain, I just select that option here. And remember, this edits the the path for the entire funnel. These are funnel level settings, so the entire funnel domain is now on this uh, URL URL right here. We can also change the path. I'm going to have another video on paths because it's a very important concept that you need to understand, um, and it deserves its own video. Next we have SMTP configuration and I'll have another section on SMTP, SMTP configuration and automation and things of that nature. So you can go ahead and set, select your SMTP account here when you have them set up. And then we have our favicon URL. So that's a little icon that you have for your uh, domain. You see these little icons here. So you can upload a ping PNG or ICO image um, if you wanna have a favicon. And then we have head tracking code and body tracking code. So you can paste your, you know, your, your tracking codes here, like your Facebook pixel, Google ads pixel, active campaign pixel, whatever tracking codes or any code you want to have on all the pages on your funnel. So again, funnel level setting. So whatever you put in here is gonna show up on every single page of your funnel. So it's a great place to put um, those tracking pixels because you probably wanna track people across your whole funnel. You can also add code to individual pages as well. So I'll show you that when we edit the pages. So if you want code on a specific page, you can do that, but usually your tracking codes go you know, across your entire funnel. So that's where you add them. Um, we just discussed this shared funnel link. So you could give somebody this link to share your funnel with them. You wanna select your, your Stripe account. If you set up Stripe, this is where you do it. I'll select it. We also toggle 
test mode or not. So I'll leave it off for now. Um, we also have Avalara, which does something with sales tax. It's a new feature. Backpack, so this is their affiliate platform. So if you're on their platinum plan, you have access to Backpack and you could go ahead and uh, set up this. We'll go through affiliates in a, another section of this course, so we'll come back to it. Zapier stuff, I uh, might have a little module training on Zapier just to get the ball rolling there. Pretty cool thing. Webhooks, if you're familiar with those. And then third-party payment access. So if you're integrated with ClickBank, JVZoo, Warrior Plus, or PayPal version 1.0, which they don't even have anymore, so they need to change this icon. Uh, you can do your product settings here. So basically, if you're using Warrior Plus, ClickBank, or JVZoo, uh, you're gonna do stuff in here, and I recommend going to the ClickFunnels help section if you're using one of those platforms because there's a few extra steps. All right, you can also archive your funnel. So if you're on the $97 a month plan, you're only authorized uh, 20 funnels and 100 pages, so if you if you're like getting close to that limit and you need to remove some funnels, here's where you go to do that. You archive your funnel and it'll remove that funnel from your, your count. And then of course you could go ahead and save and update your settings here. So make sure you do that uh, when you make your changes. And now if we go look at my URL for my funnel, we see it's been adjusted to my CF course version four domain. And let's go ahead and go there real quick and make sure it loads. And boom, just like that, we see that I'm on my domain now since I changed that setting, the domain setting. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll go through the, the step settings as well as some of the variation settings. All right, so in the last video, we discussed the funnel level settings. And in this video, we're gonna discuss the step or page settings as well as we're gonna point out some of this variation stuff we got going on. So let's go to ClickFunnels and get started. All right, so these are the page or step settings area in this gray bar here, and we're on the overview tab. So here, uh, we can get a link to our step. So if we wanna give somebody a link and give them right to a page in our funnel, we could go ahead and share this link here and I'll direct them right to a page in the funnel. Um, so if, for example, if we wanna send people directly to our order form page, like we don't need them to opt in or they've already opted in and this is a link we're sending them through an email or something like that, well, then we can copy this link here and we come over and we go to it and we see that it brings us directly to our order form page. So pretty cool stuff right there, right? Now let's go back to the lead gen page real quick. So that's the link right there. Um, and then here's our variation. So we could of course edit this page and we're gonna have a whole section on editing pages and developing pages. You could also preview this page, split test version if you want to. So if we have a variation, um, let's create one real quick. So creating a split test is easy. You hit this create variation button and you can go ahead and create a duplicate from the lead gen page. So that's what right here. So if we want to you know, tweak our headline and split test or headline or something like that, we'd select this option or we could design an entire new page from scratch if we wanted to. So world is your oyster. Um, and then we can send how much traffic we want to send. So let's say we want to do 50, 50, apply changes and boom, just like that, we're running a split test. So that's how easy it is to set up a split test. And then we can go, and there's also some settings here. So we could change the name of our variation if we want to, and also the path. I have another video on paths, so we'll get to it, but just pointing this out real quick that there's some options there. All right, so the next tab we have is automation. And then here's where you could send emails, SMS, and actions. And I'll have another section on automation. So we're going to come back to here, but this is where you could set up simple little automations for your funnel. So this is where you typically set up like a, a welcome email or a receipt email or a thank you email or something like that. Simple little emails uh, for people as they go through your funnel. And then you'll use follow-up funnels for more advanced marketing automation, or you'll integrate with a third-party tool like ActiveCampaign or MailChimp or Aweb or something like that to do your marketing automation. Um, the, the automations here are, are for simple things, welcome emails, things of that nature, real simple little transactional emails, not marketing emails. So anyway, we're gonna come back and set some of this stuff up later on. And then we have our publishing settings. And here we can change the name of our funnel step. So if we wanna change it to squeeze page, for example, we could do that. Uh, we can also change the path here. And again, another video on that in a minute. 
Um, and then there's some other options here. I've never messed with any of them, so I'm not exactly sure what they do. But if they look interesting to you, by all means, touch them, see what happens. Um, but yeah, you don't need them for anything. And then text opt-ins, never use this either. So anyway, we'll go with update funnel step. You may also notice that different pages have some different options here. So like the order form page has another tab here called products. And in this tab, that's where you're gonna configure your products for your order form. Um, of course, the OTO page also has a products tab as well because you have products on there, right? Webinar tabs have webinar related information and so on. So we're gonna go through some of these other tabs later on, just like we're gonna go through the automation tab later on. We're gonna go through products later on, show you how to develop those products. And so that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to cover a few basic settings for your pages or your steps, basically how you can direct link to different steps. That's an important feature and also how to create a split test. Also very handy if you're doing some testing. Um, and that's pretty much it. In this video, we're gonna discuss page paths. So let's just get straight into it. Um, so the page path to your funnel by default is gonna be your domain. So we have your domain here and then it's some crazy long thing at the end of it. And it's not very pretty looking, not user friendly. And also it can make things harder to track. Like if you're creating a, a custom audience in Facebook or you're setting up some sort of tracking, you usually want you know clean URLs so that way you can track people based off of you know page path visits and something crazy like this it's just hard to hard to track so we want to change it so that way it's you know nice and user friendly so that's what we're going to do in this video change all of our page paths and there are three places to change page paths so we're going to change it at our funnel level settings so we're going to change our funnels page path and then we change the page paths at the step or page level set level settings so we're gonna go through here and change the page paths to all, or change the paths to all of our pages or steps. And then we also have to change it at the variation level. So three different levels, and we're gonna go through this process several times in this video so you'll see exactly what I mean. And it'll make perfect sense in a minute here. So again, settings, blue settings for our funnel level settings, and we can adjust our page path here. Now what I recommend doing is naming the page path, the funnel, page like the your core product that you're selling so let's say that i'm just selling shoes so that's going to be my core product and you know keep it nice clean and simple and so on so there we go there's my shoes page path save and update settings and now if i look at my url we see that it's nice and clean it's my url shoes so if i go to view funnel pops it up goes to that link and then it forwards me to my first page of my funnel which is my squeeze page and then that forwards me to a variation so we still end up with this sloppy looking domain but uh, we could at least share that clean looking domain to get people to our funnel so that was step one was getting our funnel domain or funnel path nice and clean now we need to adjust our page or step paths so let's come over here to publishing and typically what i'll do here for the path is i'll do shoes so keep that same uh, prefix shoes that same core product and then I'll do like describe the page basically so this is a squeeze page so I might just do SP so shoes dot dash SP update funnel step and now you'll notice that my path is nice and clean up here and so if we go to it it still forwards us to a variation page path but we could share this nice clean link and you know bring people to our funnel step all right now the third step is our variant so we got to come down here to this gear and we'll go ahead and change this. And I usually do it version A, right? Dash A, so it's shoes, squeeze page, variation A. And update page, and then same concept for variation B over here. And update page. And now if I go to my funnel URL, what it did was it went to shoes, that's where I went, and that forwarded me to my SP page step, my squeeze page, page step, which then forwarded me to variation A in this particular example. So I guess I'm on the version A uh, of the split test. And this is a great example of how links work inside of ClickFunnels. So it basically forwards you, you know, from one link to the next link to the next, all the way down to the variation. And that's the, the URL you actually see is your variation URL. Everything else just kind of forwards you or the individual to that variation. So we're gonna do this several more times for every step in this funnel, so you'll see it a couple more times here. So let's go to the welcome and pre-sell page. 
and I'll go to publishing and choose welcome and I'll copy that update and then I'll go ahead and hit this little gear choose welcome I'll just call this one a just because I, don't, I only have one variation currently but maybe I'll do a split test later on and that way I have a version A version B etc and then go to order form same concept and we'll do shoes shoes order update and hit this little gear shoes order A update page and then same with OTO1 and I'll call it shoes upsell one update funnel step and same concept over here update and same concept ds for downsell and hit the little gear downsell version a update and then oto number two same concept again all right and then this is upsell two and i'll hit this little gear for the variation upsell two a update page and then finally confirmation shoes confirmation and I'll go ahead and change this shoes confirmation a update so now we have nice clean page pass for every step in our funnel. So if I want to send somebody to the shoes order form, I just give them this link right here, go over, you know, they go to this link. Again, it's going to forward them to one of our page variants. I only have one page variant for this particular step. So this is what I see. And so boom, just like that, we're on variation A and there we go. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you how to adjust those page paths and how I recommend naming them. Again, starting with the, the name of the product and then the description of the page and then the, the variant that they're on. And it just makes things nice and clean and neat, especially with tracking and creating custom audiences. All right, real quick before we get into this video, I'm gonna give you a quick little message. I urge you not to take any action on this currently. Instead, uh, watch this video real quick, then go watch the next video on how to create products because there's a couple ways that you can send transactional emails. I'm gonna show you one way in this video to send those transactional emails, but then there's another way to send transactional emails that's covered in the create products video, which should be the next video in this course. And so I just wanted you to watch both of those videos before you take any action on setting up the automation. Now back to the video. In this video, I'm gonna discuss the automation tab underneath of the page or step settings. So right here, we have our automation section. And as a quick reminder, these automations are for transactional type emails. So if somebody buys something and you wanna send them a quick receipt or membership login information, or if you have an evergreen webinar and you wanna send emails to notify somebody of an upcoming webinar and remind them about the webinar and send the replay out, things of that nature are, are great for this automation platform. Um, but more sophisticated automations like marketing emails you wanna send with a marketing automation tool. Now that automation tool could be follow-up funnels. We have a section of the course on follow-up funnels and we'll cover how to set those up for marketing emails and things of that nature later on in the course. Or you could also integrate with a third-party tool like ActiveCampaign, MailChimp, Aweber, et cetera, to send your marketing emails. And I'll actually have a section on ActiveCampaign as well because I'm a huge fan of ActiveCampaign and it works very nicely with ClickFunnels. So you're gonna send your marketing emails with a marketing automation tool and you could send transactional emails with this automation tab. Now, as a side note, you could also send transactional emails with your marketing automation tool. So personally, for me personally, I send all my emails with ActiveCampaign, both transactional and marketing go out with ActiveCampaign. I don't mess with this automation tab at all, except for evergreen webinars. That's the only time I do it because it just has a bunch of settings in there that make it easier uh, to work with. So I never use this, but I just want to point it out to you that it does exist and how to set it up and configure it and things of that nature. So actually, I'm going to go to the order form here so we can set it up here under if somebody orders a product. So you notice 
that there's a few different events. So it, this can be triggered for everyone. So everyone that visits this page and you have their contact information already. So like basically if they've opted into the squeeze page and then wound up on your order form page, well then you've captured their contact information already and you could go ahead and trigger an email to somebody that fills this form out. Uh, you could also send them an email if they visit this page but don't purchase. So basically card abandonment. So that's pretty handy, right? So they go in here, uh, they look at it and then they don't buy. So you could send a follow-up email an hour or two later, be like, hey, you're checking this product out. Uh, you wanna go ahead and buy it? Or obviously you don't say it that salesy, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, and also you could send a purchased email. So if they purchase the product, you send them information about shipping or login information or how to access it. So maybe you send them to a download or whatever it might be. So you see there's a few different options here. And so we're gonna add a new email, click this button here. And we have a message, provide your account SMTP settings to customize outgoing emails from ClickFunnels. So we gotta set this up real quick. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to point something out real quick before you go and follow the instructions in this video. And basically, so in this video, we're gonna set up the ClickFunnels SMTP configuration, and it's a very limited functionality. Uh, you can only send transactional emails with it, so if you're gonna do any sort of marketing or anything sales related with it, uh, you, you can't do it with what I'm about to show you. What you need to do is integrate with a third-party or third-party SMTP service. Um, and I have a video on that. It's video 6.1, or it should be video 6.1. It's called like Mailgun Integration. Something to that effect, I'll include a link to it uh, in the course notes as well, so you can go watch that video. So if you plan to send any sort of marketing or salesy emails from ClickFunnels, you need to use a third-party tool. So if you're gonna send any marketing sales emails, go watch that other video. You can stop watching this one, you don't need it. And so I just wanted to point that out real quick before you watch this video and follow all the instructions here. And then you're like, well, I wanted to send marketing emails and now I got to set up a whole other SMTP service and blah, 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 blah. Um, I wanted to make sure that you don't waste your time. So if you're sending marketing or sales emails, go look for video 6.1. And then if you're not sending that, uh, you can continue watching this video. So that's what this video is actually about is going in here and setting up these SMTP settings. Um, and once you set this up, then the transactional emails are easy enough. All right, so it gives us a couple options here. We can choose transactional only, and it's free ClickFunnels service to send order confirmations, email receipts, etc. So that's what we're gonna do here is this free setting. The transactional and marketing, It's a, you're gonna use a third-party integration, um, and we're gonna use, use Mailgun later on, but this is what you set up for when you're gonna do follow-up funnels. So this is more advanced stuff, follow-up funnels, whereas, uh, the transactional one uh, we can do easily right here. So we'll do transactional only because that's what we're doing, transactional, no marketing. And then we go ahead and name our integration and we follow the steps here. So I'm gonna fill it out real quick. All right, so I filled out my settings here. So I named it my automation or my integration, my from name, from email, my domain, uh, my postage information. We have to include that for the, the law, the law requires us to have an actual physical address in our emails, and then we also have it down here in our footer. And I could set this as my default SMTP integration, or of course I could select it later on per each funnel. I'm just gonna select it later on per each funnel. And okay, they're gonna do something, wait for it to finish up. All right, so it gives me a few DNS records that I have to go ahead and update here. And so I'm gonna go into Namecheap and do that. So if you followed along and got a domain name from Namecheap, you could go ahead and uh, follow my video. Otherwise, you could come over here to the support area and I'll have a link to this in the course notes and I'll tell you how to integrate with various uh, domain registrars like GoDaddy and so on. So let's go ahead and make it happen. So let's go over to Namecheap real quick. I'm gonna go to Advanced DNS and then I gotta go ahead and add some records. So I'll just do add new record and come over here. The first one is a text record. So I'll select text or TXT. And then we gotta enter our host information. Now it lets us copy this whole thing here, but we don't actually want our domain as part of it. Uh, that'll mess things up. So what you really only need is this M1 domain key thing. So make sure you copy the right information. Otherwise you're gonna have some issues. So I'll throw that in there. And then we can copy this this whole thing over here, paste that in there, and boom, just like that. 
All right, now we're doing it right. All right, so C name, we just need this part right here and add new record and C name and paste that in there. And then we got this bit of information over here, copy and paste it, check, cool. And then same thing down here for white labeling. So CF links, add C name, CF links, and it's this right here. Paste that in there, okay. And then one more C name, and you paste it in there, and then it's this number thing right here. So we'll grab that, paste it, check, and okay, so good to go. Uh, we can go ahead and hit validate DNS records. And now I didn't receive any success or error messages after clicking this button, but it could take a few hours for it to work. So maybe it's still in process, but I'm gonna move forward and see if we can move forward. Um, let me go here real quick, email integration, and let me click this button here in settings. And then I'm gonna try and verify my email settings as well. Let's click this button here. And okay, so email settings are good. So I don't know why there's no success or error message. We've sent a test email. Make sure you save your SMTP settings to enable sending. Okay, cool, save. And the SMTP integration was successfully updated. And let me check my email real quick. And so here we go, your SMTP settings on ClickFunnels are verified. So we did get the email, it came through. Looks like everything's working okay. So I don't know why they don't give you a success message there when you validate, but anyway. Let's go back to our funnel and actually do our, our automation while we're here in the first place. So course, front end funnel, and I'm gonna to go to my order form, and I want it to go to my automation tab, and I want to add a new email, and now I can go ahead and add a new email. So here we go, so we'll go Nathan Williams, and thank you for your purchase. And I'm gonna go in and send from my ClickFunnels FSMTP setup that I just set up and send only to subscribers active in the past X days. Now this isn't relevant here because uh, they just bought the product, so they're obviously active, right? So I'm gonna ignore that condition, send it to anyone that purchased, cool. Um, also, I could set a delay, so if I wanted to delay it, you know, an hour or so after they purchase, um, I could do that or, you know, send it right away. So, and then I go ahead and select a template to work from and you can customize them so it doesn't really matter what you select but I usually go with like a simpler one because then I can delete things out. Also, you can save your own template um, and just use that template too. So let's open our editor real quick and you'll see how it works. So, you know, it's drag and drop WYSIWYG editor. So you wanna change the lines, you can type in here. You can go ahead and delete it if you want to. You could delete this whole row if you want to. Okay, cool. You know, you could change the image, select a different image, upload it, etc. So you just kind of play with it. I'm gonna have a whole section on the page builder and this email builder works just like the page builder. It's like a simplified version of the page builder. So if you know how to use a page builder, you can use this email builder. So we'll cover more on that later. But you basically see how simple it is and there's a few extra settings and pre-header and preview and stuff up here. So you can, you can mess with it. It's pretty simple to figure out. And that is pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to show you how you could go into this automation tab and set up your SMTP integration for transactional emails. Again, that's all you're gonna send from here are those transactional emails. You're gonna send your marketing emails from a marketing automation tool. And you can also send your transactional emails from a marketing automation tool, which is exactly what I do. I never use this section, but I wanted to show it to you anyway, just in case you wanna use it. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up a product now, in order to set up a product, you need to be on a page type that supports the products tab. So order form page types, OTO page types, OTO downsell page types, all are product or sales related pages. So you can have products to sell on these particular page types, right? So if you don't see this products tab, it's because you have the wrong page type selected. So products, and then we wanna go ahead and add a product. 
And there's a bunch of options and configurations in here. I'm not gonna go through every single type of situation and scenario, but if you have questions about how to do something, like you wanna do a subscription product or something like that that I don't quite cover in this video, please feel free to ask me. I don't mind shooting a personal video or anything like that to make sure that you have your product set up correctly, okay? Also, there is some help in the ClickFunnels support area on, on how to set up products. So I'll link to that in the course notes as well. So between me, this video help section, you'll get your product set up is my point. All right, so first things first, we gotta go ahead and select our integration. So Stripe, if you have other integrations, you can select them here, of course. And then subscription, payment plan, or one-time product. I'm gonna do one-time product here, but of course you could do a subscription. So, you know, recurring payments, or you could also do a payment plan. So they make, you know, 10 payments of $50 and then they have lifetime access or whatever it might be. You could go ahead and provide a commission. So if you do have the Platinum ClickFunnels plan, the $297 a month plan, and you have affiliates with Backpack, so you've got to configure Backpack as well. We haven't done that yet in this course, but if you configure Backpack, then you can go ahead and provide a commission and you just flip this switch, select the commission plan, and so on. So we'll cover that when we go into the Backpack section. All right, so moving on, we'll do Save and Next. And now we gotta go ahead and set up our product detail. So this is a funnel that sells shoes. So I'll just say red shoes. And product price, we'll say $50. And currency, of course, like the one that's relevant to you. Price override. So if you want your price to look different than what's right here, so this will just display like $50. But if you want it to be like $50, oops. $50 and free shipping. So if you want that displayed on your order form, you could go ahead and like customize how the price is displayed on your order form. So we got that. And then we have our shipping origin address. So if you wanna enter this information on where the product's shipping from now, obviously if you have a digital product, this isn't relevant and you don't need to fill this out. And you don't need to fill it out even if it is a physical product. Like it's depends how you handle your own fulfillment basically. but. So I'm gonna leave this empty, it's not necessary. Billing description, so this you probably wanna fill out. So this is how it'll appear on your customer's credit card statements. So you wanna make sure that you know it's descriptive and they remember that they bought something from you and so on. So crazy uh, media LLC, and then I'd probably put in my product description, red shoes. Okay, cool, good enough. Now we could select this as a bump product. So if you have a bump field on your order form, you could set that up. I have another video on bumps, so we'll come back to here. Uh, but this is a switch you'll go ahead and flip. So this is something also to be mindful of. I've had several students have issues with products not showing up properly, and it's usually because they've switched this switch. So pay, be mindful of this switch. If your product's not showing up, it's probably something to do with this. You can also set product inventory limits. So if you do have limited inventory or something like that, you could go ahead and set limits so that way you don't oversell or anything like that. So this could be handy depending on your business. I'm gonna go save and next. And then we have custom product variations. And I'll shoot another video on this because it's a pretty nifty feature. So we'll come back to it on another video. For now, we're gonna say not no custom variations and we're just gonna go save and next. And then we have our fulfillment emails. So this is a bit different than the transactional emails we set up in the previous video where we configured the SMTP settings. For this, you don't have to configure your SMTP settings and ClickFunnels will still send an email out. So this, this could work um, instead of you know, doing SMTP and all that other stuff. Uh, but basically what it'll do is just send one email out right after they buy that product. So you could say you know something about it um, like the red shoes receipt. And then you can go ahead and write your text in here. It's not a pretty drag and drop editor like the last one, but you know, I mean, you can do most, most things. Uh, you, you probably don't need that pretty stuff anyway. But the point is you could go ahead and send your fulfillment email through this option right here, or you could do it through that automation tab, or you could also do it through a third-party automation tool. So a bunch of different ways you can send those order confirmation emails out. And one thing you could also do is link to a thank you page or a membership page. So basically, if you have a membership area, and we'll cover this when we talk about membership areas and thank you page areas, so we'll talk about this again later on, but you can put this merge tag or merge code in here, and it'll automatically enter the link to 
whatever you select down here. So if you've set up a thank you page or a membership area, you can go ahead and select it here and it'll dynamically enter that link there. So that way the person could access the membership area or the thank you page. So we'll come back to it if that's not making much sense. I just want to point it out. Um, I'm going to turn it off now because we're sending an email through the automation tab. Save and next. So follow up actions here, we could go ahead and trigger some integrations. So right now all we have is the ClickFunnels internal integration, but later on we're gonna integrate with ActiveCampaign and we're gonna send tags and subscriber information into ActiveCampaign. So we'll come back here, but there's some cool stuff you can do and I just wanted to point it out. Up next we have shipping. So if you're shipping a physical product, you can integrate with different services. They got Kunaki and Disk Delivered. And you could also add other shipping integrations like ShipStation and Shopify. So if you use any of these tools, it could be beneficial. There are some limitations to the Shopify integration. Not gonna get into it now, but it is limited. But moving on, we'll go back. And I'm gonna leave this unchecked for now and go with Save and Next. And now it gives us essentially a summary of what we've set up here so we can make sure that everything looks right and okay, yep, yep, looks good to me and return to product list. And now we have a product set up on our page and we could of course add more products if we want to. And let's go check it out real quick, see what it looks like on our order form page. So there we go. And I'll just fill out some information. And boop. So here we go. So red shoes, $50 free shipping and so on. So there's our product. We got it added to our order form. And you see that was pretty easy. And again, we're gonna go through several of these other steps as we, we go through this course. We're gonna talk more you know, on product variations and follow-up actions and so on. So there's more to come in terms of products, but we got the basics now and now you know how to add a product and get paid for that product. Alrighty, so I hope you enjoyed the training. Now I have a quick special offer for you. So if you want a digital copy as well as an audio copy of my book here, as well as 20 pre-written emails to make your email copywriting a piece of cake. And I also have a seven figure funnel. It's the first funnel that I built that generated over seven figures of revenue for a small business. And the funnel includes a course on how to set it up and also how to actually sell that funnel to small businesses. So if you're interested in starting a digital marketing agency, that course and that funnel are, are an ideal option for you and there's a bunch of other benefits and stuff bonuses and stuff anyway link in the description down below or there's going to be a little button probably up here in the video if you're interested in checking it out yeah just just check it out if you're interested um and other than that i hope you have a great rest of the day